What up, Dad Nerds? Luke here, and let's talk about this. What is this? It's Microsoft Excel. And this tool has helped me out a lot as a data analyst. Now hold still, I'm about to perform a miracle. In its simplest form, Excel is a spreadsheet application capable of analyzing data in tabular form. When I first started using this years ago, I used it for its basic features. You know, sum and VLOOKUP. And then I took a few online courses and leveled up my skills in order to use more powerful tools within it, like VBA. All I do is double click on the bot, some simple code that will be executed. But over the years, Microsoft has added more and more features to Excel in order for them to compete in the marketplace. And although this was initially a good thing, like the addition of Power Query to connect to a variety of data sources or Power Pivot to explore data greater than 1 million rows, this has slowly led to an application that was initially designed for quick and easy analysis of data to now being used as overly complex and sometimes faulty solutions that businesses rely on for their day-to-day -day decisions. This overcomplication of the simple software has led to a lot of problems for companies over the years, like when an intelligence agency bugged the wrong users due to an Excel formatting error, or when outdated Excel files resulted in incorrect tracking of coronavirus cases. How did that happen? Well, it seems as if it was an IT error. And one of the biggest of all, when a rogue trader at JP Morgan ended up with a trading loss of $6 billion that is credited to an error in his Excel calculation. Now let me turn to what went wrong. We believe this series of events led to the difficulties in the synthetic credit portfolio. So in this, I'd like to share how I use Excel and what I think it was intended for, highlighting some of the most powerful features in this tool, along with how I've used them in my job. But more importantly, when you should probably be shifting to other tools. So with that, let's get into it. I'm Bill Gates. In this video, you're going to see the future. So let's start with the core feature of Excel. Microsoft claims that this is the industry leading spreadsheet software program. So what is meant by this word spreadsheet? This is a document in which data is arranged in rows and columns of a grid and can be manipulated and used in calculations. And for the majority of people, including myself, this is the most notable feature used. So as a data analyst, my boss will provide me with a task. Luke, my guy, we need to dive into yesterday's data. Got to figure out what's more popular, data analyst, data scientists. So where do we get the data? Let's keep it simple at first. Most major applications allow you to export this data either via Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. So let's open this data in Excel and run through some tasks that I would typically do. First, I always start with formatting, highlighting columns, and adding a sorting feature to make it easier to look through the data. For ad hoc analysis, I'll use formulas and functions to clean up the data. Like in this case, I'm using a variety of text and logical functions in order to clean out the data analysts and data scientists. Which formulas you'll use will really depend on the job that you're trying to tackle. But at a minimum, I think that you should know these formulas by heart. Moving into the next step, I'll put it into some sort of table so I can easily find it and make it pretty so my boss thinks I've done some productive work. One thing that we note is that this spreadsheet itself is limited to 1 million rows of data we can import into it. So we'll talk about ways later that we can bypass this. The next step in the process is getting into analyzing the data. And yes, we could use formulas for this, but I'm a big fan of using pivot tables instead. Pivot tables allow me to go through and perform analysis on the data that I feel is more repeatable. If I add new data or fix a formula, formula, my analysis updates with a refresh of a button. Finally, I'll move into building my visualizations to showcase these answers in order to give my boss. More data analysts than data scientists? Really? Luke, I'm going to need you to run these numbers back. And I think this ad hoc analysis of answering a one-off question in Excel makes this a great tool to use it for. And it's especially good for those non-data nerds that may not be familiar with other tools like programming languages or BI tools. But we're now moving into areas where we can get into using Excel beyond its intended purposes. So let's look at the next major feature of Excel, VBA. This morning we announced our Visual Basic product. This feature was first concluded standard in Excel back in the 90s, and frankly, it's wreaked havoc ever since. VBA stands for Visual Basic for Applications, and is simply a programming language to use within Microsoft applications. And it's most notably used Used in Microsoft Excel. VBA comes with its own integrated development environment or IDE for you to write, test, and implement your code in Office applications. Basically anything you can do manually in Excel, you can also automate via VBA with some code. Let's say that my boss's boss comes to me. Hey Luke, that was a really good report. Do you think you can get the one to me for today and for tomorrow? Actually, do you think you can get it for every day? Well, VBA can come to the rescue for some of these repetitive tasks. Simply by clicking record and then going through all those actions I previously did, I can save this macro that I've recorded to be used later to compile future reports. So in this case, I can just run the macro on my updated data and get an updated visualization. Oh wow, 
This is so fast. I'm gonna have to give you more work from now on. Now, in my opinion, VBA should only be used for simple tasks similar to this. And I ran into a problem with VBA in my first job as a data analyst. At the time, I only really knew Excel, and so I was using Excel for everything. I was the owner of an Excel sheet that analyzed monthly performance for a supply chain cycle. I would manually download this data monthly and then use a macro to clean up and import all this data. From there, I would run calculations to determine metrics that my colleagues were interested in. Now, this solution was working fine initially. But the problem was I was using macros in a way that Excel was not designed for. Mainly, I had turned this single Excel spreadsheet into a database. Excel was not designed for this. This sheet ended up getting so big that it would frequently crash and we eventually ran out of space in it. This atrocity actually motivated me to learn other better tools. So if I had to start over again with this project, I'd use something like Python or R to insert this data into a database and then from there use Power Query to access it via either Excel or Power BI. So based on this experience, I really feel that learning Learning the basics of VBA is good enough. And that is why one of my favorite courses to learn Excel is Coursera's Skills for Business Specialization. It not only teaches you all the basics about Excel and what you need to know as a data analyst, but it also gives you just the right amount of introduction into VBA without wasting your time learning the unnecessary aspects of it. All right, getting back into that previous problem with my bosses. Let's say that my boss comes back to me again. Luke. <laughs> so I love this graph, right? But I wanna see how it trends over time. You think you could build that for me? Yes, Mr. G. So we already learned we shouldn't put all of these Excel files into a single Excel file for fear of crashing it or exceeding that 1 million row limit. So what to do? Well, Power Query comes to the rescue. With this powerful tool, we can connect to all these individual files or an even better solution we connect to the database that has the data itself. From there, Power Query can load this data from a variety of sources into that single Excel file. Now this is completely different than loading the data into the spreadsheet itself. With the data model, the data itself is loaded in the back end of Excel and it's loaded transparently so it takes up a lot less space than normally. Because of this, we can analyze and investigate millions of rows of data. On top of this, it's also awesome of not only loading the data, but also cleaning the data. With the Power Query editor, you can go in and clean up the data and you don't have to use those formulas like we did before. And from here, I can load this clean data into a data model to then be accessed within Excel. From there, I can once again use pivot tables to go in and analyze that data. Now, once again, with this new tool of Power Query, there is another language that goes with it, the M language. The good news is, is I wouldn't worry too much about learning this language as it has its own GUI interface to generate the code as you go. I do find myself having to use the M language to generate custom columns, but I can easily Google what needs to be done for this, so I don't recommend mastering the M language. When it comes to basic tasks for data analysts, Power Query is really great at connecting to popular data source options such as CSVs, databases, and even other Microsoft applications. But sometimes depending on the industry that you work in, there are better solutions than Excel. And you can use these solutions in order to automate ingesting the data and also performing data analytics. Let's take, for example, the sponsor of this video, ChartMogul. Say you work for a software as a service or SaaS company, and you're the analyst in charge of monitoring metrics like like change in subscribers, monthly recurring revenue, LTV, ARPA, churn, and cash flow. If we tried to use just Excel for this, we'd have to manually download the subscription data probably from multiple different sources like Stripe, Recurly, or the App Store, import it into Excel, build out formulas and dashboards that we wanted to calculate, copy and paste these charts into an email, and then send it to your boss for review, only probably to be questioned by our boss and have to investigate the data further. By the way, did I mention your boss wants this email to the team every day? With ChartMogul, you can directly integrate with a host of popular their billing platforms to automatically import and clean your data. ChartMogul instantly calculates all of your top level metrics to speed up your workflow and generate the insights you need fast. Your most critical numbers might not be visible at first glance. ChartMogul's segmentation capabilities enable you to make more data informed decisions, like identifying the pricing plans that are most profitable and the customer profiles that are most likely to convert. Spend your time more efficiently using the transparency that ChartMogul provides by drilling into, investigating, and fixing inconsistencies in your data before your pesky boss notices. ChartMogul is an excellent example of a tool for SaaS businesses that would be better used to run these type of companies over just an Excel spreadsheet. So thank you ChartMogul for sponsoring this video. All right, so moving into the last main feature of Excel that ties this all together. How do you now analyze all these different data tables that you've imported into Excel with Power Query? Well, Power Pivot. This is a tool that is basically pivot tables on steroids. Warning. Loop Barus does not condone the use of any drugs. So with these data connections, you can then mash up different large volumes of data from various sources. Hey Luke, the daily analysis you did the other day was great. But we're gonna have to compare with sales data now. Ugh, it never ends. What? 
Nothing. So with Power Pivot, I can then bring in other data sources and establish relationships between related tables. In my job as a data analyst, I find myself doing this quite frequently. Once connected, I can then use a popular option such as pivot tables to analyze this data, or even take it a step farther and use another language from Excel, DAX, or Data Analytical Expressions. Once again, there's somewhat good news behind this DAX in that it's a very similar language to the Excel formulas that you may already know. It's as powerful as SQL in exploring large data Data sets. All right, so that's the main features of Power Pivot. But I find myself gravitating to business intelligence tools if I ever get to this point in a project. I find tools like Power BI or even Tableau make this much easier to explore the data with a more intuitive graphical interface. And they also provide a low effort means to share your work via a dashboard. Personally, I'm more of a fan of Power BI because it takes advantage of Power Query and also the M language and DAX. So all this stuff that you've learned in Excel, you can also apply in this tool as well. So we'll end with this general rule. If you're starting to go beyond the core functionality of Excel, exceeding those spreadsheets, like having to build a dashboard in Excel, it's time to look for another tool. But don't tell my bosses I said that just yet. So Luke. That Excel work that you did the other day was great. So great, in fact, that we're changing your title from data analyst to BI analyst. Does that come with a pay raise? No. Also, all that work that you did in Excel. Yeah? We're kind of going to need you to redo it in one of those fancy BI tools. And we need it then tomorrow. That's going to take weeks. Good luck. Okay, I think we got it. That's funny because it's recording this if you go bloopers too. <laughs>